latest information on preventing and detecting breast cancer. She'll be showing a very detailed demonstration of the right way to do a breast self-exam. Please welcome breast cancer surgeon and founder and director of the Pink Lotus Breast Cancer in Beverly Hills, Dr. Christy Funk. Welcome. welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Happy to be here. So let's start and talk about the importance of early detection. Early detection is critical because that's our best chance at cure. Finding breast cancer at stages zero and one where the tumor cells are confined to the breast itself and have yet to spread is 98% curable. So early detection is our best defense against this disease. What are the chances of women getting breast cancer in their lifetime? In their lifetimes, you've probably heard it's one in eight, but your chances are never one in eight on any given day. It's can be stratified across your life by decades. So for example, if you're in your 20s, the risk isn't one in eight, it's one in 1,681. In your 30s, one in 232. In your 40s, one in 69. In your 50s, one in 42. In your 60s, one in 29. And in your 70s, one in 27. So how does that work out wow. to one in eight? It, yeah. So it's an, if you do the, <laughs> if you add up yeah. if you add up the percents with each decade, your total percent risk is twelve point five percent in your lifetime. So would mine go up because breast cancer runs in my family? Would my chance then be higher than one in eight? Potentially, it matters about how many relatives, mm -hmm. and if the breast cancers were under age fifty or after, and actually what other cancers might be involved with your family history. There was a page was sharing with us a little bit about your grandmother. Yes. Who, who has survived breast cancer twice? How, twice. Yes. How early in that process? Because you were saying how the early detection is critical. How early mm -hmm. did she catch it? You know, I wish I would talked to her more about it. She was, she was kind of put on this brave front, and she let us know that she was okay. She came out here yeah. for treatment. She lived in Florida at the time, but I never knew about stages. And you mentioned stage zero. I didn't even know that was right. a possibility because I thought it's either nothing or stage one. Mm -hmm. But there is that in between. Yeah. So I don't know what stage she was. I just know she beat it twice. Mm -hmm. But I do know that she caught it early enough. Did it require chemo? Yes. So and radiation. It, right. So it was probably stage two or three. So stage what, zero. What, yeah. What stage zero. So there are the breast anatomy is basically lobules, which is the milk producing part of the gland, and these hair thin tiny ducts. The ducts carry milk from the lobule out the nipple. The ducts are responsible for 75% of all breast cancers, even though they're so tiny. When the cancer is confined to an intact tube, it's stage zero, or DCIS. People may have heard of that. Okay. Real quick, the question, women in their 20s, and, and I don't know if this is something that I heard that's not true, but when you uh, get again, uh, breast cancer at an early age in mm -hmm. your 20s, it is a more aggressive cancer than it is, let's say, after menopause, such as I, like, such as me. Such, is that correct? Such as I. I don't know, <laughs> such as I, I'm sorry. Is that true? It is true. By and large, any woman with breast cancer under the age of 40 has a much more aggressive tumor subtype. So why is it that, that you're saying that as a young woman, you shouldn't have to worry about getting a yearly breast exam? Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, no, that's, what's, that's the information that's out there. Right. They're saying, you know, women that are in their 40s should go, and especially after menopause, mm -hmm. at least every year. But when you are a young woman, they say, oh, you can go every three years, every four years. It wasn't so even required when I went to the doctor. Well, They're that, like, when you turn 40, that's when you need to start coming in. I'm like, even with the risk in my family, right. it's not something I should be checking. But they said, do self-exam, which I feel yeah. like I fail right. at. Let's talk about the self-breast <laughs> exam right now, because what is the proper way to examine? In your breasts. Okay, so first of all, you should start doing self breast exams at age 20, and you should do them every month, one week after your period. That's when your breasts are the least tender and lumpy and confusing. If you don't have periods, pick the first of the month and mark it off on your calendar. You want to pick a place that's comfortable for you. So, usually reclining on the bed or standing up in the shower are good spots. I recommend using lotion or shower gel to sort of help your fingers glide across the breast tissue. And most importantly, I always tell my patients, don't stress about it. For the next six months, just get the lay of the land. You're just trying to learn what your breast lumps feel like because, heaven forbid, you develop something that's new or different, maybe you'll be the first to find it. Why don't so you don't show stress. us exactly how, how to do this? I can do that. Okay. All right. So. Now, let me ask you, too, before you start this, because, okay. you know, all the girls are jumping in. Poor Mark is sitting here like, oh, gosh. Well, that's <laughs> oh, but no, I, but yeah, is it something yeah. that guys need to worry about as yeah. well? They do need to worry about it, but not that much. So only one in 70,000 men gets breast cancer versus us one in eight. There are going to be, in this year, 232,000 invasive breast cancers diagnosed. One percent of those will be in men. Hmm. Really? 
All right, okay. so let's wow. do our self exam. All right, so the breast exam actually starts standing in front of the mirror. You wanna disrobe from the waist up and stare at your breasts in the mirror. You're looking for shape, size, or contour changes, changes to the skin like thickening, redness, dimpling, retraction, bulging out. The nipples should be pointing out if that's where they always pointed. If one is suddenly pointing in or off to the side, you wanna notice that. While you're staring at breasts in the mirror, you wanna put your hands on your hips and flex in. You're flexing your pec muscles. And then you wanna raise both hands straight up overhead. Again, what you're looking for is simply the skin to dimple in or bulge out. Once you do that, you can either pick the bed or the shower, and this is how you do the exam part. The breast you plan to examine first should have that arm raised up. You can bend your elbow back for comfort, and it's the opposite hand that will do the examining. You want to use the fat pads of your three middle fingers, and you're going to start at the upper outer part of your breast, using those fingers, making tiny circles gliding across the breast tissue. Don't lift your fingers off your breast skin. And you wanna do this three times in each direction with three different pressures. First light, then medium, and then deeper still. You wanna pick one of the following four patterns. You can go up and down vertically. You can go left to right, like words on a page. You can go concentrically in circles like a target sign from the nipple out or radially like spokes on a wheel. However you do it, it's all the same. Just do it the same each month. So your fingers kind of develop this unconscious memory of what your breast tissue feels like. Now, where is your breast? You think you know, but it actually goes all the way up to your collarbone, over to your sternum, under to the curve that you know, and off to the side of your chest wall. There's some breast tissue called the axillary tail that goes off towards the armpit and sometimes even into it, and you wanna feel the lymph nodes of your armpit. The final step is to gently squeeze the nipple. You're looking for bloody discharge or clear. Every other color, I don't care about. You're queasy. And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little yeah. queasy. Repeat on the other breast, and you're done for the month. But well, that's the thing, I, and when you started the show, you said people are wigged out, and I love that you use that because it puts it in layman's terms. You know, we are wigged out, and just the thought of that or discovering and that makes I, me so nervous. Can I ask yeah. a question about this? What is it about that process that wigs you out? Is it the chance that you may find something, or is it the process mm. of you know going through? We're going to find that out but uh, we're going to find out how we can start doing the uh, things right now to maximize, to minimize your risk of breast, breast yeah. cancer, and then we'll also answer that, that question for okay. you because we both of us have a lot to ask a lot you of and lots to say. So we'll okay. be right back. Yeah.